Uh, first up, uh, do you always shop at the same supermarket? We're going to tell you which supermarkets have come out on top in price comparisons. And we want to hear from you. Where do you shop and why? Do you always go for the cheapest or do other things come into play? And Chef Dean Edwards has got his own tips on how to keep prices down at the supermarket. So get in touch if you've got some great hacks uh, to share with the rest of us on how you get the best deals. After that, we're going to be discussing are 1% deposits a good or bad idea when it comes to getting a mortgage? More than ever, young people are struggling to get on the property ladder. And with uh, rising house prices, it's even harder to save enough money to cover the deposits needed. So is a 1% deposit the answer or would it make the problem worse and actually push house prices even higher? We'd love your thoughts of that, particularly if you're struggling to buy a house yourself or you're just getting into the market. Uh, get in touch. And finally, should you worry if your child is overweight? Obesity levels in 10 to 11 year olds have still not returned to pre pandemic levels, and experts are warning that there actually could be lifelong health consequences. So, Dr. Uh, Anita Raja will be joining us to give some advice, but maybe you're out there and you're worried about your own child or your family member uh, with obesity issues. So, pick up the phone and give us a call and ask your questions. 0207 862 is the number that you need. Calls from landlines may cost up to 16 pence per minute, plus any call setup fees and calls from mobiles may cost considerably more. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, of course, search for Jeremy Vine on five, use the hashtag Alexis Conran, and you can also email me Alexis Conran at channel5.com. But first, do you always shop at the same supermarket? 0207 862 22 is the number that you need. Pick up the phone and let us know. The price of food has skyrocketed recently. It's uh, the most, so it's more important than ever to make sure that you're getting your money's worth. But for a lot of people, convenience or habit mean they have got to go to the same supermarket every single time. And that could actually be costing you hundreds of pounds. We're joined today by Chef Dean Edwards to share his tips on how to get the best out of your supermarket shop. But first, let me ask you two. JJ, are you, did you go to the same place every time? Yep, I go to Sainsbury's for the main shop. Yeah. On a Sunday for Sunday roast, M&S or Waitrose. Treat myself on a Sunday. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> Isabel, are you stuck with one place? I love a supermarket. The bigger, the better. And right. I, I lose all discipline in one of those hypermarkets, like the massive ones. Yeah. So there's a really... But you start buying shoes. Oh, You've only 100%. come in for potatoes. And you, <laughs> you've yeah. bought a printer and some Literally, shoes. Literally, <laughs> there's a huge one on the Isle of Wight where we go on holiday a lot and I'll go in and I'm like, right, I need to get some potatoes and some milk or whatever. I'll be coming out with a canoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. Dean, it is, it is an issue, though, isn't it, that for a lot of people, they don't have the choice because they'll go to the one that's nearest. We spoke many times on this show how the local versions of the bigger supermarkets, your Tesco Metro, your Sainsbury's local, charge sometimes up to 40% more for the goods that are in the identical item in the bigger store. Um, so actually varying where you shop could actually end up saving you a lot of money. Absolutely. Um, I think... The main thing is uh, what people are more concerned about. It's, it's, it's the convenience, isn't mm -hmm. it? So, yes, by shopping around different supermarkets, you know, because they change from week to week. You know, there are offers and bargains on in different supermarkets. So you can, if you've got the time and inclination, you can shop around and you can save a fortune. But I guess you have to value your time. And, and how much yeah. do you value mm -hmm. your time? You know, and, and petrol money as well, if you're mm -hmm. kind of going around three or four different supermarkets, it might be... It not as quite as cost effective as you, as you might think. As a chef, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place, though, aren't you? Because you've got to have the quality of your ingredients because the way you design your menu, but then price comes into that because you may want to cook something your customers may want to have, but actually price forbids you from putting it on the menu. Yeah, absolutely. But I think for me, my speciality now is, is really family food and home cooking. So I can really relate to the struggles that people up and down in the country are having. And I've been in that position myself where... You know, money is so tight mm. that the important thing is putting something really delicious and nutritious on your table. And I think, yeah, by shopping around, you can really kind of make, make savings, but it's not always as easy as that for people. OK, well, let's have a look at the most expensive uh, supermarkets there. So we're going to go from the most expensive to the cheapest. This comes from Which Magazine and were released earlier this month. No surprises, Isabel. 
top of the list there, Waitrose. And it is a different shopping experience. Is it? So, yeah, we've got a Waitrose not too far from us, and I very rarely go in there for the reason that it is that much more expensive, but it's quite nice going in there it's they're just a bit they tend to be a little bit smaller obviously you do get some really big ones um but yeah i feel like the food is a bit higher quality and for me i'm really passionate about farm animal welfare okay um, a bit of a quirky thing about me i actually really do care about those chickens and the pigs and the cattle and so on you still eat them though um <laughs> so, well, I, actually I, I don't eat much of it do you know? so okay, very fine. very choosy about what we buy and waitress has amongst the best animal welfare standards on its from its farm suppliers as does M&S the further down you go to the cheaper supermarkets they put less of a premium on uh, higher animal welfare standards. So if that's important to you, yeah. then Waitress is a good one. Uh, so Waitress at the top, this is for the, for the same shop. Uh, it came at £94.94. .94. Then as you see, Ocado, which I think is M&S now, uh, Morrison's uh, and then Tesco. Now, important to say that all these prices are um, without the cards that you can use so these out the loyalty cards we've done items uh on the show before about how loyalty cards can help bring those prices down mm. so these are without a loyalty card now jj let's go to the cheapest one so it is no surprise that aldi topped that list it's always a fight between aldi and little mm -hmm. they're always between aldi and little then you've got asda and then in fourth place you've got sainsbury's are you surprised by that, JJ? Not at all. Actually, I would have thought Sainsbury's would have been on the, the higher end um, for, of, of, of cost, but you'd expect Aldi and Little, Little to be at the bottom. You, you get what you pay for in there. It's, it, like Isabel says, it's, I don't find it a pleasurable shopping experience going to Aldi. There's lots of random things. The, there's no brand canoes. of anything. <laughs> yeah, canoes. You like go there, there's thing. a camping chair sometimes for sale. <laughs> Not enough canoes. <laughs> Not enough yeah. canoes. I, I don't chair. like the, I don't like shopping in Aldi or Lidl. Boring. But but for basic staples like um, cornflakes. I wouldn't mind going to Alden Little. Do you actually buy cornflakes? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Such an old-fashioned uh, example. Right? Let's uh, <laughs> let's hear from people at home who are getting in touch. Ray in Nottingham. Ray, good afternoon. What would you like to say? I'd like to agree with um, what you've said about you must shop around. Yeah. I'm a, a pensioner in my late seventies. Mm -hmm. I have eyesight problems, so I can't drive. So I have to shop where I can. Right. But I, I don't mind catching two buses to go and get what I want from where I want. The biggest problem, apart from price, is have they got the product? Are you finding that to be a problem, Ray? I mean, a lot yes. of people have complained of shortages, and a lot of people... I hear more and more people complain that perhaps there isn't a shortage. They will get the a, a product that they need, but the choice of... Whereas before you could have three or four or five in different versions of what you're after, now you're confronted by... One or maybe possibly two. Are you finding that's happening well, let more me give more? you an example. Go on. Uh, Lidl, for instance, have been out of salad cream nearly all summer. If you mm. want a salad, I, I have salad cream with it, so I would mm. go somewhere else. Uh, and I shop around. But it's not just human food. You've got to take into account, A, the service that you're getting. Yeah. I like to buy bulk. I'll buy pallets. You buy but, pallets? Wow. I'll buy pallets. That's hard uh, on the bus. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <isn't it>? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's, that's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah. OK. Uh, OK, I so buying... I have to get a driver. But you see, there's animal foods, there's pet foods. Yeah. And they're now, heavy. I rescue, really I rescue, Yeah, I rescue cats. And at least product I buy is 20 dozen tins. How many cats have you got, Ray? Uh, I've only got 24 at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Wow. Are you serious? I'm short, Ray? I'm short stocked. I'm recruiting. <laughs> but, uh, are you, uh, Ray? Are you serious? You've got 24 cats. Yes. Uh, amazing. Yes. I, I can imagine that having to buy for 24 cats. Yeah, I, I, I can't quite work out how you do that on, on buses. Ray, thank you for your call. Shopping around, of course, that is that is the big key. So I have a question. Yeah. Um, 
What about places like Costco, these huge places mm. where you can go yeah. and buy stuff on bulk, on pallets? Surely that's the, the best way to save money. You have to have membership. And you have to have mm. storage space. To, to, yeah. Yeah. That's the key. People don't have places Costco. to store. I, I remember I kind of really got into Costco for a Did while you? and I thought, oh, this is going to be... And actually, I ended up paying more because you kind of get so excited because you're buying... And you're buying everything in bulk. Yeah. yeah. But I think, I think you I have to be... You have to buy chocolate. You have to be VAT yeah. registered for, things, for right. places like Costco. But I'm yeah. sure if you have to buy in bulk, so mostly the, the other shoppers around were people who are running takeaways yeah. and people who are running sort of smaller restaurants. For them, yes, but I think for domestic uh, people, unless you've got a ginormous family, I don't think it's as costly. Do you know, I, I think buying in bulk for, for a family using uh, the, the essentials, you know, like rice and pasta yeah. and th things that can really work out because if you've got it in your store cupboard, you yeah. do tend to use it and it's just about being that little bit more yeah, organised. It's, it's always least economic, isn't it, to buy the smallest things. Absolutely. I mean, I've noticed in the supermarkets these enormous sacks of rice or pasta, they're literally just a few pounds. They keep you going for a long time. Yeah. Now, you have been running a campaign on how we can save even more money by actually going back to canned goods. Yes. Which I know for a lot of people, and I do think that this has to do with generations. Mm. I think certain generations are very familiar and comfortable with canned goods. Mm. And when sort of fresh products came to the supermarkets, everybody turned up their noses on canned goods and said, well, it's not fresh, it's in a can. But actually, that's not quite true. Well, I, I actually grew up eating canned ingredients and it was a real staple part of our, our family life. And, you know, I, I sort of looked back in the day, we used to do our shops once a week. You know, mm -hmm. by the end of the week, the cupboards were pretty bare. Like, sorry, Mum. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, the, the biscuits went first, you know, all those... Yeah, yeah. You know, by the end of the week, you were kind of... Just the spam. Yeah, like. exactly. <laughs> well, hey, come on, spam's pretty good, <laughs> eh? Yeah. Um, but I do think that by using canned ingredients, it can really add to your, 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 your family meals during the week. Now, mm -hmm. when I was a student, and money was so, so tight. You know, you can afford yeah. a little bit of chicken. Mm -hmm. And I always used to use canned ingredients as a way of making my meals go further, kind of, you know, and just really maximising that, that kind of nutrition and, and taste within I the, the, the eat, recipes. I used to eat, the, as a student, canned ravioli. I'd literally oh, eat it yeah. out of the tin. Delicious. I can't believe yeah. looking back. Uh, Alphabeti uh, pasta, Ooh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That on toast, basically. <laughs> I lived off, off of that for a bit. That. Let's have a look at some of the prices, because it really can make a big difference here. So fresh peas, £1.75. For the same amount, 10 peas, 28p. That's a massive really? saving there. Let's take another one. Tuna, of course, Mm. Quite expensive when you're buying it fresh, so, uh, seven pounds eighty for the same amount canned tuna, one seventy five. There's so, a huge difference. Huge difference, um, which, which in the long run, of course, save you a lot of money. One last one, because I do love a bit of a, you know, when you're looking for something sweet, can, fresh pe peaches, canned peaches. I think I even can sometimes be even nicer than fresh peaches. For, they're in the syrup. That's they're in the I'm syrup, a <laughs> little bit of yogurt. But look at the difference. Fresh peaches, £3.20, a tin of fresh peaches. And you know they'll be right, but 34. I like the ones yeah. that say ready to eat and they're like bullets. Yeah. <laughs> I, think on, I think on average you can save around 50 pence per item as opposed, fresh as opposed to, to right. using cans. So, you know, if, if, if you haven't got the budget, I think it's absolutely fantastic to use these ingredients as a way of making your budget go that much further. But it's not even above that. I, I think having both canned, frozen ingredients alongside your fresh, because we throw out an incredible amount of food yeah. in the UK. Um, let's take another call. Susan's got in touch uh, in Hertfordshire. Susan, good afternoon. Uh, what are your shopping Hello. habits, Susan? Do you, do you always shop at the same place? Um, I don't. Um, I quite often shop at Sainsbury's, which is my local supermarket. Yeah. Is it one and, of the big ones? Um, yeah, it's a, a big Sainsbury's. Okay. Um, but I prefer, um, if I'm honest, I prefer to shop online. Oh. To, um, this is um, a company that has mostly organic, fresh food. Right. Which is my preference. Yeah. Um, but it's obviously it's more expensive, so I can't do that all of the time. And how are you with um, canned goods, Susan? Do you because we were saying that actually you can save a lot of money even with those organic companies by buying, you know, canned goods. They last for a very long time, very quick and easy. Open a can of beans, you can make something lovely with it. It's really cost effective, very good for you. Are you are you into your canned goods? I generally try to avoid that because of the aluminium, for one thing. Um, I've heard that the aluminium can actually get into uh, the blood 
screen. Uh, and also, um, because never, if it's got... I've never heard of that salt. before. Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But, 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 also, if it's got um, salt, salt or sugar in it, then obviously I don't want to have that either. So okay. I try to avoid that. All right, uh, um, Susan, thank you. I want to look into that because I always assumed that that was just n not true. But then again, Susan may have uh, very good sources for that. But I would have thought that, that canned goods are safe and good to eat. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, personally, I've, I've never heard of that. Yeah. In, in opposed to what Susan just said around the, the salt and sugar, not every canned ingredient has that as a way of preserving the, the ingredient within. You know, the canning process itself okay. actually kind of makes it safe for us to eat up to five years, would you believe? I think it's something to do with if you leave the tin open and you store ah. it in your fridge, so oxid it's not uh, oxidized, scientific. Yeah. It's okay. something like that. That, yeah. that, that, that of course, yeah, yeah. That, that might be something. Um, Dean, thank you. It's been a pleasure to see thank you. Thank you so much. Really nice of you to step inside. Fellow uh, MasterChef winner. Oh, wow.